Hi YouTube, back with another homesteading questions video. So this past week, um, a viewer actually emailed in a question and they wanted to know um, in what sort of animals would be useful um, or would be the best sort of bang for your buck, um, particularly if you are wanting to raise your own animals in the city. Um, so obviously living in the city versus living in the country uh, versus living in the middle of nowhere You're gonna have different uh, animals that you can raise uh, But I sat down and I gave it some thought um, So these are my top five suggestions for animals if you're looking to start uh, raising your own food raising your own Animal products in the city. So my first suggestion and this is one uh, that almost anyone can do uh, would be chickens so chickens uh, are, are very versatile, um, they have a lot of advantages to them. Obviously there is the eggs factor, um, there's also the fact that they're pretty easy animals to take care of. Uh, they do need to have some sort of space um, to lay their eggs and to be going into um, at night and when it gets cold, uh, but other than that they're pretty easy animals uh, to look after. Um, another plus, if you have a garden and you are somewhere or you're somewhere close to a garden, um, chicken manure is some of the best fertilizer uh, naturally. And some people might think that that's gross, um, but I would rather eat uh, for I would rather eat vegetables and things that have been fertilized with natural sorts of things rather than chemicals. Um, those are your two options. So chicken uh, manure is one of the best things for a garden. So if you wanted to garden, if you want to start gardening at the same time, chickens would be your best bet uh, to start with because their manure is the best quality. Along the same lines of chickens, uh, so your second option if you are not feeling like chickens and you want something that's a little bit different, uh, you can do ducks. So the only difference with ducks being that they have to have water, uh, so take that into consideration. If you do have something that is close to water um, or you're able to build some sort of pond in your backyard, that would be perfect. Um, duck egg, ducks also do lay eggs, uh, but they don't necessarily lay every day. Most chickens will lay an egg every day. Ducks won't necessarily, um, so something to keep in mind, it's a, it's a factor there. But uh, they, do, they do lay eggs and they do uh, um, produce very good quality of meat. So there is that as well um, that you can have, you have eggs and you have meat. Um, ducks, the, the biggest thing that you would have to make sure of is that you get them in at night um, because otherwise they will go looking for water. Um, so chickens tend to kind of stay close to the coop, um, whereas ducks will wander a little bit more. So something to take into consideration if you are wanting uh, to go with ducks as opposed to chickens. So my third suggestion for an animal um, to start raising in the city, and this is something that a lot of people don't think about, um, would be fish. You can actually do quite a bit with fish, um, regardless of whether they are raised in an aquarium or whether they're raised uh, outside in a pond if you have koi or um, or catfish or something like that. Um, the advantages with fish is that dependent on what type of fish you're raising, they don't necessarily need a lot of room. Um, now the downside to that is that it can be rather costly um, if you want to dig a pond in your backyard um, or if you want to set up some kind of uh, aquaponics system um, or hydroponics system that can run you quite a few thousand. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to raise fish. Uh, they do take longer to mature. Um, I know tilapia is a really a really big hit um, to be raising on your own, uh, but they do take about 30 to 34 weeks. So you're looking at about seven months, eight months um, before you can eat the fish that you've raised. Um, however, they're fairly low maintenance. Um, if you're doing some sort of aquarium inside, if you have a giant room where you have all your uh, aquariums, that would be something that would be uh, an option for you if you're if you're wanting to raise fish in the city. The fourth suggestion I have uh, for animals to be raising would be rabbits. Um, rabbits are a very cost effective uh, meat to be raising simply because <laughs> they breed like rabbits. Um, rabbits when they breed, uh, they can breed multiple times a year. Um, I would say anywhere from four to five, depending on your breeding program, depending on the type of rabbit, depending on how long they're pregnant for. Most rabbits are only pregnant for about a month. Um, it's anywhere from like 28 to 35-ish days. Uh, and it depends on the size of rabbit too. Uh, we ourselves have giant rabbits. Um, so our smaller rabbit, um, she's a giant rabbit, but she's not quite as large. She'll have about six to seven kits um, per litter. Our larger rabbit, um, who is a, I think she's a Flemish giant, 
um, and she will have she's had anywhere up to 11 so usually we get quite a few more out of her um, than we do out of the smaller one Something to take into consideration with rabbits is that they have to have clean cages. Uh, so you have to clean their cage. Again, depending on how many rabbits you have and how big it is, you have to clean the cage, I would say probably every two to three days um, to make sure that it is good. Another consideration would be the type of rabbit that you're raising, but most rabbits are going to need outdoor time uh, or want outdoor time. So just take your accommodations uh, into consideration with that. Um, if you're going to have the rabbits in cages, you have to make sure you clean them obviously And if you have them outdoors, you've got to have some sort of rabbit tractor um, Or they'll go hopping off and there goes your meat. So uh, that is a consideration as well um, The other thing is the cost factor Rabbits are a very cost-effective way to raise meat if you can free range them a lot of the time uh, If you cannot free range them meaning that you don't have the space in your backyard for that um, it's going to cost you quite a bit because one rabbit eating kibble is not a big deal but when you have that rabbit that gives birth to anywhere from 6 to 12 kits they're going to be on milk for the first month or so and then they're going to start eating usually you're not going to want to butcher the rabbits until th 3 to 4 months potentially 5 depending on how much you're feeding and, and how big they are um, but you generally don't want to butcher until at least 3 months uh, because they're not worth it before then. You want to make sure you hit butcher weight. If you have to feed one rabbit uh, for you know for the entire their entire life, that's different than if you're feeding anywhere from six to twelve rabbits for an additional three months um, every couple months, depending on your breeding program. So just taking that into account, rabbits are very cost effective, uh, but only if you can free range them um, organically. So taking that into consideration, you've got to make sure that you have the proper accommodations for that. My last suggestion would be, and this is the biggest animal, my last suggestion uh, would be goats. So goats are a very, very good source um, of a homesteading animal and they're a very good choice for homesteading animal um, because of the fact that they are so versatile. So goats obviously produce milk. Uh, from milk you can obviously make a whole bunch of different things. Some goats will also produce uh, wool for, or, or fiber for, uh, for clothes and things like that. Um, so they're less maintenance than sheep and they're also less maintenance and require less space than cows. Um, that's another advantage of them as well. For goats, uh, you have to be careful uh, because they are two, two cons that I would say. Um, they're lawn mowers, they will eat anything and everything, um, and that's a good thing if you have them within a contained space. Uh, which leads me to the next point, goats are escape artists. So if you don't have a space where they are for sure going to be enclosed, um, they will find their way out of it and they will uh, potentially disappear and there goes your meat and there goes your milk. So you do want to make sure if you have goats that you have the proper setup um, or you can tie them. That's another option uh, if you want to tie them to like a tire um, or tie them to a cement block or something like that so that they can't go very far and they can just kind of graze in a circle. Um, that would work. Because they are so easily uh, fed because they eat almost everything um, you don't necessarily have to spend as much uh, on hay or other feed for them, uh, provided that you have that probably third of an acre um, for them to graze around. That's kind of why I left them till the end, because that's a bigger animal uh, that does need more space. However, if you're on the outskirts of the city um, and you have a third of an acre or even half of an acre, you could probably stick a couple goats on there and they would be just fine. So those are my top five suggestions uh, for homesteading animals, uh, especially if you're looking to get started in the city. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you guys have any suggestions or any thoughts, maybe I missed an animal that you think would be really good for starting a homestead, leave a comment in the description below um, and we'll definitely get back to you. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.